in the navigator you can insert a camera right click on cameras insert camera or in the asset browser if you go to uh, i believe elements you can take a camera and put it into the viewport and maybe we want to create a camera that follows the root bone controller uh, in case we want to like a follow camera like you would have in game following the player uh, so if we go to the schematic view you have camera and camera interest which is the pointing of the camera so i recommend actually adding an extra null and call it uh, i don't know cam parent for example parent those two to the cam parent so select them hold x click and drag from anywhere uh, onto the the desired target say parent so now you created a parent constraint Back in the viewport, if you press uh, Ctrl E, you will go into this camera mode. So now I'm controlling my new camera. If I create a second viewport, uh, here I have pr the regular perspective view. And so we'll see the effect. If I jump back on the left, we'll see that I control this camera. And because it's parented to uh, that null that I have here, when you move that, it's going to move the camera, right? And so that null, we can constrain it to whatever we want. And I think it's better uh, to have this null and constrain it to what we want rather than directly creating a parent constraint between the camera and the root controller. So if I go to the schematic view, it looks like this. And then in constraints, I can create a, I can create a parent child, okay? So uh, parent uh, camera, I can take that, drag it into the constraint child and constrain it to the root bone controller, zero it out. Maybe I wanna actually make that null invisible. Now when I move my root, the camera follows. But it also follows in rotation, so if you don't want that, you can always come into the constraint properties and then go to constraint axis and disable the rotation. You could also, uh, if there is some vertical movement and you want to ignore that, you can come in and uh, disable effect translation Y. So now it's only going to react to uh, the X. And Z translation, so just the horizontal translation. When you want to animate the camera, if you're in selection mode and you select the camera, your uh, key in groups will change to current camera instead of T and R. This means that when you start uh, keying, you're going to key those extra uh, properties like the field of view, the role, and when you just animate the camera movement, it might not be what you want to key. Uh, so usually <clears throat> I select those two objects and I uh, make sure I'm back in TR uh, when I just want to key uh, the translation and rotation but not the field of view or the role right so let's make those not animatable again select the camera and stay in tr and maybe i want to be in the auto key for this and just uh, move my camera around through my shot and if you want to just key the, the field of view on top of that, you can go to Selected Properties and just key the field of view. Then I can just take the, the interest if I want. Make that a little bigger. So I can animate it uh, from here as well, from the camera view. So I could constrain that interest if I wanted to, to an object, right? 
in your camera settings, uh, if you remove the look at object, so you can say right click detach, uh, your camera doesn't have a look at anymore. So it's all based on uh, rotation now. So it's less intuitive, but maybe you you want to you want that for some reason. If you want to create a, a GoPro effect, for instance, so I parent constraint my uh, camera to the head. Say so snap to maintain offset. Then I lock. If you have several cameras, so I have one that uh, orbits around the character like this and uh, zooms out, and I have a second one that just uh, stays behind and pans like this. In the story mode, you can add a shot track and then take your cameras, uh, hold and, and drag hold X and drag to add a shot. So I'm going to do that for both cameras. I can activate the story and right click say uh, make camera switcher current. So now I'm using the switcher so it's based on the shot track that uh, for now for the first part of the shot I'm on the, the first camera the one that zooms out and then around here I jump to the other camera for my second shot. So um, you can have your different shots and still animate your camera underneath. So, so if I select my second camera and I play around with the keys, I still edit the camera animation. But uh, in terms of, of shots, when I jump from one camera to the other, it's based on the story mode. And you can keep that and you can also uh, tweak your cameras by adding a camera track here and assigning your cameras if you need to, just like you would uh, edit a character animation in story mode. Uh, it's worth noting that you have lights, um, and this is where you can change like the the overall ambience of the of the scene if you need. Otherwise, if you want to change the background color. For your models to stick out uh, from the background for example you want to select the camera so here in the navigator you have the cameras producer perspective is your main camera you can see so in the navigator view you have some some settings here some properties okay but you don't have all of them uh, if you want to see all the advanced properties you want to go here in resources in the properties tab and in the properties tab make sure that you always have all type here and not default type because when you have default type you have a lot less options and in all type you have all the advanced settings so in, in for camera settings uh, you can change the background color here for example and you can also change the picture format uh, so by de default it's the entire viewport but um, so this is similar to the resolution gate in Maya you can actually make it uh, like uh, different standard resolutions. So HD probably the, the one you want to work with. And you can specify a frame color. So you can make it darker if you want with the frame color. And you have some more settings here. Uh, you can show the time code, for example. This is the frame number. Show the center of the camera and you can show safe area. So, this is useful when you animate cameras and you want to make sure you have a nice framing, or if you play bass and you want to show someone like uh, you want to be able to refer to a specific frame very easily. You can also add a fog, which is pretty strong by default. Um, you could make it like the same color as your background if you want and uh, this way you don't see the frontier between um, the, the sky and your uh, floor mesh if you have one so depending on the size of your floor or your grid you can uh, reduce the, the end for instance 
uh, and you probably want to reduce the density as well down to 1 or 0 0.1 and here make it uh, square exponential this way you still see your model clearly unfortunately when you have fog and you go in front view or any orthographic view uh, you don't see anymore because it doesn't understand the, the distance so you want to turn that